Hello and welcome to the special bonus episode of The Dairy Edge. Chagas are running a weekly Let's Talk Dairy webinar series, which is also being made available as a podcast. On this week's webinar, Stuart Childs gives advice on planning for dry off. So this morning, I'm just going to do a very little bit about a small bit, 15, 20 minutes at most, in relation to um, planning for drying off for 2021. So just, I suppose, not around selective dry cow, we're going to do a, bit, a good bit in that over the next couple of weeks, probably different bits and that pieces and aspects to it that are important in terms of delivering on selective dry cow. But what I'm going to focus on today is the bits and pieces that probably need to be done before uh, we start looking at drying off at all uh, in the next couple of weeks. And obviously we have to identify cows that are going to need antibiotic treatment, and that's not going to change with the new regulations when they come in, whatever they're going to actually be next year. Um, so we're still going to have to be able to identify the cows that need to be treated with an antibiotic and get the appropriate antibiotic for them. So we're the 23rd of September today. Um, there's bits and pieces that have to take place before uh, you can have the information available to you far in, in order to do the, um, the correct dry off procedure for your, her- your own herd. And that obviously varies from herd to herd as well. So um, from that point of view, we're just going to go through a few little bits and pieces that we need to kind of put in place and put in train in order to be in a position to dry off, which is actually going to be taking place probably within a month or so in particular with the, for February calving herds where heifers are going to start being dried off because obviously we're going to give them a longer dry period, uh, somewhere around 12 weeks. And obviously then for herds that start to calve in January, that's actually coming at you a lot quicker even. So um, there'll be very short space of time and time moves on very quickly in, in that regard. And as a result, it means um, that we can be a small bit behind the curve when we need to be ahead of the curve, really, in, that, in this case, right? Okay, so, so what you need, I suppose, what can you be doing right now? I suppose we've had a very good month of September, uh, to be fair. Most people are generally happy with the month of September that we've gotten. So cows uh, haven't really gotten dirty as yet, I suppose, from the point of view that fields are in very good order, paddocks are in good order. Uh, and as a result, cows are generally quite clean. However, that won't take long to change. If we get wet weather in the next couple of days, which is forecast for over the weekend and dry matters, even though they've already slipped already, could slip a little bit further and um, cows could get quite loose and tails that haven't been clipped are going to become like paintbrushes basically with dung on them. And they're obviously bad from both an operator point of view and also from uh, the cows point of view, because obviously, since the legislation came in preventing tails from being um, clipped or from being shortened, obviously, as, as was the case for many years, years ago, the, the tail, the swish of the tail is basically in the other region. And if it's dirty, it is a major source of contamination to uh, the other antiques as well. Um, tidying up others, then, I, personally, I, I've, I feel that the, you'll all see individual cows within herds, but... Um, Cows in general probably are inclined to develop hair as the, they're getting ready for the winter, basically. And that hair is also another major source of contamination, especially when we do get into slightly trickier weather um, and tidying that up whatever way it is, whether it's clipping or singeing, um, there's probably uh, negative connotations associated with the singeing. But I, if it's done correctly, there's no problem uh, with that. Um, and it means the cows don't obviously have further sources of bacterial contamination in the, in the vicinity of the teats other than what they're encountering on the cubicles when they'll be housed maybe by night in the next couple of weeks potentially are out in the field as well where they're encountering um, just ordinary earth and so forth when, when they lie down in fields and, so, and it's damp. Um, and then the other major, major source of contamination that cows are going to uh, encounter and it kind of ties in a small little bit with the with the tails and the others then obviously in particular um our roadways so as the weather disimproves uh roadways start to come under a bit of pressure they might appear like they're perfectly good all the way through the summer and then when we get uh, bad weather the water doesn't get off them they start to turn puddly and as a result of cows walking on them they start to splash uh, dirt up onto their others and as I said the hair on the other then is trapping this maybe and keeping it in the vicinity of the teeth so we need to be planning for that and um, there may be some of you have to do some work in relation to nitrates and so forth around roadways anyway but in particular that probably first 200 meters maybe uh, from the entry and exit point into the collecting yard is the most vulnerable area and in my own opinion probably needs to be 
addressed every two to three years anyway in terms of resurfacing to improve the, that because it just it just gets a lot of traffic obviously uh, widening that area can be good as well in terms of reducing contamination levels in that area as well okay so that's the bit around the clean cows so clip the tails tidy up the others uh, and look after the roadways and that's something that we need to be doing now because if we don't do it now it will lead to trouble potentially later on because we have the we now have the the conditions that are going to create uh, bacterial contamination of odors when the weather gets starts to get um, poorer. Then we move on to the individual cow information. Um, so what we need there is, uh, for in terms of preparing for dry off, is so a lot of herds are scanning at the moment. So that's that's the individual information that we're beginning to look for. So cows have been served if they're if they're not showing bullying and they were only served once, we probably have a good idea when they're in calf. But if they have um, been served several times, we need to know when are they actually going to calve next year, uh, because that's going to dictate their dry off or up to a point maybe uh, where herds are dried off fully. Obviously, everything is going to be dried off um, just before Christmas, maybe, or, or whenever you decide to dry off. And the calving date isn't as important then. But for those February calvers, where objective is to give very, very minimum would be six weeks, preferably and ideally an eight week dry period for a mature cow and 12 weeks, um, 10 to 12 weeks. And again, prefer preferably to 12 weeks for heifers as well to give them a chance to recover. Uh, and all the work would show that, uh, again, I suppose when you take it in, into account in eight week dry period that a cow will probably at least spend a week at least drying off as such post tubing. Uh, and then we'll start to spring down in advance of calving obviously as well and take in, factor in uh, earlier calving dates relative to um, before, because of shorter gestation bulls, etc., we have to probably be thinking more along the lines of eight to nine weeks to dry off. And that really only means that a cow has six weeks of recovery period. Uh, and that's fine if cows had a healthy odor all year through. Again, if we've had issues with cows, longer dry periods can help to um, help to, the odor to regenerate and recover and will lead to a better cow in the subsequent lactation so if she's had problems this year making sure that we get, get treat her correctly and give her a long enough dry period can actually influence how well she's going to perform for us the following year so the calving dates are important in terms of when do we have to dry them milk recording data then is obviously critically important and it's great to see that milk recording is increasing across the country through various incentives it must be acknowledged to be fair to co-ops that have brought them in um, but milk recording information is increasing. And as I said at the outset there, we're not fully sure yet what legislation is going to be uh, in place from the 28th of January next year. It hasn't been fully decided. It's been discussed currently. But the likelihood is that milk recording information is going to be critically important in terms of access to dry cow antibiotics if you're to look at the Dutch scenario as it uh, works currently. So we need the milk recording data to ID our high cell count cows. And in reality, I suppose, we, ideally, we want to have been uh, milk recording throughout the year, but there will be options there for people potentially to start recording that haven't been recording all year uh, and continue to record in 2022. And you'll get a point in time uh, indication in relation to cell count on those cows. I suppose what I haven't in there, um, and it's probably a little bit in the late side now, obviously, but is um, mastitis that information as well. And we've talked about that during the course of the year, how important that is to record cases of mastitis as they occur in order to identify those cows as having issues uh, with mastitis so that they don't get potentially uh, subjected to a, 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 a celeroni protocol, potentially, if you're going down the route of selective dry cow therapy. Uh, if you haven't recorded cases of mastitis, but your case of mastitis happened to occur at such a point between recordings that cell count wasn't actually affected in the recording, then you're potentially putting that cow at risk of having a problem in the coming in the subsequent lactation because there has been some form of an, uh, an, an infection there during the course of the year. So we move from the individual cow information then into the individual quarter information. And again, we've spoken about this earlier in the year in terms of trying to maybe stay on top of cell count um, throughout the main uh, lactation period there during the summer. And the, the information that we would have to hand is that cell count is actually on the, on the creep a small little bit again. This year, um, having had been done great work down through the last number of years to reduce it. So people, I suppose, as we said in, in the presentations that we've given earlier in the year, yeah, when milk price is good, the temptation is to milk on those cows. 
Um, and that's fair enough as long, I suppose, as long as we're trying to do something about it and definitely trying to minimise the spread. So if our cell count is increasing across the herd and more cows are getting infected, the advantage of milking that milk as such is, is very much negated. So identifying those individual quarters are important from the point of view of making sure that we don't spread any further now, uh, but also trying to identify what problem we actually are working against when it comes to drying off and uh, also for lactation tubes as well. So we have the cow information coming from our milk recording data. We're going to get our individual quarter information by using the CMT test um, to, problem, to identify the, prob the qu problem quarter or quarters in those um, cows that have been identified from our milk recording. And then the key thing here, I suppose, Willie Buckley is a vet down in uh, the Riverview Veterinary Clinic in Bendon, and he would have done a lot of uh, um, workshops with us last, this time last year. And Willie's adamant that we have to identify the cow, identify the quarter, and then you're taking your milk sample for to identify what bug you're working against and you're, do your sensitivity tests on from the quarter. That's the problem, because if you're including the other quarters into the sample, you're diluting down the, the, problem, the problem quarter milk, basically, and making it less likely that you're going to be able to identify the 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 bug that you're dealing with when they try to grow it up in the lab. Um, I suppose in terms of taking that individual sample, again, if we go back up to the top here to our clean cows, clipping their tails, et cetera, clean udders are going to be very important and the clean operator is also very clean tails, all very important in taking a correct milk sample. You get a lot of um, multiple growths on milk samples that go into the labs because of bacteria going into it. So if you can imagine that Cow's teeth is here. We have sample bottle in my left hand as I'm, as I'm looking at G. We're drawing the sample into the bottle, not down into the bottle, across into the bottle, not down into the bottle. Because as we draw down, even though we may have cleaned the teeth, which we should have, obviously, so at the very minimum, teeth spray and wipe, and or ideally, I suppose, methylated spirits to clean off the, the teeth that's going to be sampled. And if we are putting our sample bottle underneath and drawing down, there's a chance that we're going to bring some sort of debris and dust from the cow's udder into that sample bottle, which we're then subsequently going to send to a lab and ask them to grow up the, the problem bacteria. And when we get something back that's a, a bit off kilter, then we're kind of wondering what's the point in doing this. So taking the sample right is important. So our bottle at its land, take the cap off the bottle kind of as late as possible before you take the sample. Obviously put the bottle in a uh, cap of the bottle somewhere where it's not going to pick up dirt as well and draw the quarter at an angle into the bottle so that it's only milk is going into the sample bottle, okay? Uh, and that's very, very important in terms of that individual quarter information and identifying the problems that uh, you have. So we now have our milk sample, I suppose ideally as quickly as possible, we want to get those away to the vets to get them to send them away to the lab for uh, to do the resistance and sensitivity tests. So it's critically important, I suppose, from the point of view of uh, what, what tube are we going to be used on the cows that are going to need it that's going to be effective and I suppose what's even more important is identifying a tube that's not going to work so again for various reasons which I suppose I haven't come across yet uh, an explanation for um, we could be using uh, a particular tube in 2020, uh, 2020 when we were drying off and for whatever reason if we were to use that tube again in 2021 um, it may not actually work due to some sort of a, an adjustment of the bacteria that we're dealing with on the farm, which has for some reason become resistant. Now that could be induced through maybe misuse of, of milking cow tubes or whatever during the course of lactation potentially, or for whatever reason, it can just change from time to time as well. So even though we may have had a very good um, dry off period last year and things went quite well, it's always good a practice to, to do those sensitivity analysis again before we go drying off for the, the subsequent um, year, just to make sure that we're still working with the right uh, product. So then I suppose in terms of the overall plan and what you need and what you have to get and so forth, I suppose what we probably find is that people are uh, almost caught on the hop, I suppose, with um, drying off cows, that they suddenly realize that there's cows to be dried off and they're not really after preparing the cow to dry off as well. And you often get people complaining about cows bagging up quite a lot and look you need a certain amount of bagging up in particular where you use antibiotic because you need it to circulate through the other in order to do that uh, its job properly 
Um, but we also we don't want them just really blowing up or dry off either. So we need to plan to reduce down milk yield and at least one week ahead. Uh, and I know Dennis Howard is often, from Munster Bovine has often speaks about maybe separating out the group of cows that you're going to to dry off as as an option. Now practicality that can be sometimes a bit challenging, but maybe that's what people are going to have to do, especially where we have batch feeding going on in parlors and you can't control the amount of feed the cows are, are being fed. Where we have individual feeding going on, eh, you just need to mark those cows, I suppose, at least, as I said, one week ahead of, of um, drying off. And at, at the very minimum, reduce the, the quantity of feed, if not cut out the quantity of, of concentrate to those cows um, a week ahead of drying off in order to start cut, shutting down the production for them uh, to make it that bit easier for them to dry off. Then I, uh, from going back to the last slide, obviously, we need to get the appropriate antibiotic tubes where they're needed. Uh, and that's going to be driven by our sensitivity analysis to identify those. Obviously, we have to order them. We have to get them into, into, the, into the store, basically, and collect them and so forth. So that needs to be done in advance as well. And again, just be conscious that there's probably less and less product be, uh, available on the market with, uh, in terms of the different types of tubes that were out there. Some of them aren't being the licenses aren't being renewed on them. So uh, the, the amount of, of actual options out there may be limited. So being ahead of the curve in that sense is important as well. Teat sealer, we've experienced shortages of that in the last couple of years as well. So I suppose the early bird catches the worm, getting those in. Obviously, there's no requirement to identify what cows are, are to be getting those. Uh, obviously, all cows that are going to be dried off are going to be getting it. So you can be ordering those directly from your co-op or whatever without any or your vet or whatever, without any problem. So we should be moving to get those ordered, I suppose, in the next couple of weeks as well. And then the final few bits and pieces that are going to be needed, I suppose, are cotton wool to help clean teeth. And cleaning teeth is going to be very, very important, I suppose, especially where we're going down the route of sealer only. That teeth needs to be squeaky clean, literally, um, in order to do the job correctly. Methylated spirits is the uh, antiseptic, as well, or the, the cleaning agent of choice. Uh, and again, that needs to be ordered. Um, in order to get significant quantities of it, because in some cases it can be limited as to what they'll allow out. Um, and you won't always be able to get uh, huge volumes of it at short notice either. So final thing then, uh, and this surprisingly, this crops up every, uh, every year, I suppose we'll hear of cases of this where cows um, aren't marked after being dried off, but they're put in a separate bunch, a gate falls down, Cows are mixed and we don't know which cow is dry without going to a list, basically. Cows get milked and there's obviously a risk of contamination of a bull tank then with, with um, antibiotic. And obviously then the whole process of drying off has been compromised as well. So it's very, very important that cows are marked um, clearly. And I would nearly say that people should almost mark them so that they could be seen from a long distance, not to mind close up um, to be very, very clear that those cows are uh, cows that are, have been dried off to avoid any, any, any mishaps occurring, okay? So I suppose just to summarize, we need to have clean cows. So clean cows are going to have clipped tails and tidy udders. We need clean roadways to facilitate clean cows. We need to have individual cow information around their dry off dates. Um, when, when their calving is going to dictate that, we need their milk recording data then to identify the high cell count cows. From those high cell count cows, we need to in identify the individual quarters. So we need to use CMT tests to do that. Uh, and then we're sending those uh, samples from those problem quarters, which are taken correctly, to the vets to, be, get, to get a sensitivity and resistance information back on them. Then we need to get our appropriate antibiotic tubes, order our teeth sealers, uh, I would say now, cotton wool, methylated spirits, that all can be ordered now. And uh, make sure that there's plenty of stock marker to identify the cows and think about your plan for to reduce your milk yield. Depending on your circumstances and depending on your milking parlor and how you're set up, that may vary from farm to farm. Uh, but we need to try to shut down production, I suppose, uh, gradually in advance of actually drying them off. So just uh, one question in there. What I do is clean tip of teeth with loof uh, glove prior to final milking. That way, if you do rub dirt in teeth canal, milking will remove it. Um, so I think that, that loof of glove is probably one of those kind of exfoliation gloves, I think, uh, probably. Um, I suppose the most important thing I would suggest from that 
um, from that point there that you're probably tubing as you're milking potentially. Uh, ideally, we will probably separate out the cows post milking and bring them back in to dry them off. Um, but it's more just important, I suppose. The other thing that maybe should be on there is a headlamp because lighting in milking parlors, as good as it may be, when you go down to a teeth level, it can be a little bit harder to see. So I suppose I would suggest that people maybe look at getting a headlight in order to make sure that they can see clearly. The other thing to check out probably uh, and can cause problems and will cause problems, I suppose, around um, selective in particular is if there's teeth in damage. So if there is teeth in damage occurring, you probably need to contact the milking machine technician to have a look at the machine to see is it uh, inclined to over milk somewhat uh, that's causing this teeth in damage. Now, uh, that may not rectify itself quickly enough in order to go down the route of selective if, you, if that's a problem on your farm so just be conscious of that I suppose um, liners and so forth to haul those things need to be right in order to make sure cows are milking out properly um, long and short of it I suppose is we need to plan we need to be prepared and there's between getting a milk recording done CMT testing your cows getting your samples away getting the results back or be very quickly you're going to see a fortnight drift there and as I said, today is the 23rd of September, uh, with last day of September, this day of week. So you need that information probably in your hand um, by the middle of October at the latest. So in the next two to three weeks, you need to be moving to get your samples sent away and, and results back. You need to be ordering your teeth sealer, cotton wool, metal, metal spirits, and buying your stock markers, etc. in the next couple of weeks as well, in order to be prepared. So... Um, we'll talk, as I said, more. There's probably for a lot of October, we'll be looking at different aspects around housing and um, the actual tubing technique, maybe, and identifying cows and using um, your milk recording reports that will be suitable for selective and so forth. So, a lot of October, we'll probably be plen spent talking about um, the actual process of drying off and preparing for drying off as well. Uh, so, we'll, we'll delve into it a little bit further then. Uh, but that's it for today. As I said, get your plan in place and, and start getting your ducks in a row, basically, to start drying off for 2021. Um, we'll be back next week and we'll talk to you then. And in the meantime, stay safe and thanks for tuning in. Bye for now. That's all for this week's Let's Talk Dairy webinar series. And don't forget to look out for more bonus episodes each week. I'll be back with our usual Dairy Edge interview on Monday, so do listen in then. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and thanks for listening.